In our top story, Ohio State has named Michael Drake as the new university president. The polar vortex keeps students out of the class for the third time this semester, and students may have to make up that snow day. And Miss America comes to campus to talk cultural diversity and how even the pageant winner herself isn't immune to bullying. Plus, a university vice president was announced, but he doesn't have to go far to start that new job. He's already a Buckeye. All that and more right now. I'm Alexandria Chapin. And I'm Alice Bacani. You're watching Buckeye News Now. In our top story, Ohio State has officially appointed Michael Drake as the university's 15th president. The Board of Trustees made their official announcement on Thursday, where Drake also held a press conference to address his newly appointed position and how he plans to adjust as OSU's president. Drake has served as the Chancellor of the University of California, Irvine, since 2005. Also a medical doctor, Drake served as Vice President of Health Affairs for the University of California. Drake will officially assume the President's office on June 30th. Ohio State is bold in its intention to inspire greatness in its faculty, its staff, and its students as it ascends further in the ranks of the world's preeminent institution of higher education. Transforming lives is a tall order, but this university is sharpening its focus in ways that will improve lives close to home and around the world. I'm deeply humbled by this opportunity and looking forward very much to joining the Buckeye family. Go Bucks! As the polar vortex returns, Ohio State canceled classes for the third time this semester. And now the university is allowing a makeup day option to professors. Alice Bacani has more on this story. Due to below freezing temperatures, Ohio State classes were canceled for the third day this semester. But this time, some facilities remained open. Temperatures dropped as low as negative 11 on Tuesday as students walked to their 8 a.m. classes. But even in these frigid temperatures, some students had to report to work as the Ohio Union, all libraries, and recreational facilities remained open. But students won't be able to escape a day of class quite so easily. Professors with classes on Tuesday will now be given the option to hold a makeup day, but some students aren't excited about this prospect. I think that my biggest thing would be that it's, I don't see it being necessary because so much of college is outside of class anyways that most people probably would have skipped those lectures even if they had been held because it was so cold anyways and I for one will probably not be attending a lecture should they give one on a Saturday because that's just ridiculous in my opinion. <laughs> I mean I, I guess I can understand but it seems, I don't know, is it really necessary? And it, I don't know if I'll go even if there is, even if I'm required to. So. The makeup day will be held on what was originally reading day on April 22nd. Whether or not students will have to go depends on their professors. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Al Spicani. Our meteorologist Mackenzie Bart has been with us following that extreme weather. Mackenzie? With temperatures dropping as low as negative 13, classes were canceled on Tuesday. See what the rest of your month is going to be like coming up next on our full forecast. Mackenzie will join us again later in the show with your full weather forecast. Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith was recently named Vice President of the University as announced earlier this week by OSU Interim President Joseph Aluto. According to our partners at The Lantern, Smith will receive an almost 12% pay increase and his contract has also been extended four years to June 30th of 2020. So uh, I wanted to uh, have an opportunity to, to 
to see the, the vision that uh, all of us have in the athletic department mm -hmm. come to fruition, yeah. and that takes stability. And so uh, Joe was kind enough to listen and you know, afford me that opportunity. I've been doing the business advancement part for a little over a year now. Okay. So really the vice president, and, and that is formalizing those responsibilities I've already had. This week, President Barack Obama addressed the nation in the State of the Union. The president brought up his plan to make college more accessible to students and help them graduate. We're working to redesign high schools and partner them with colleges and employers that offer the real-world education and hands-on training that can lead directly to a job and career. We're shaking up our system of higher education to give parents more information and colleges more incentive to offer better value so that no middle-class kid is priced out of a college education. We're offering millions the opportunity to cap their monthly student loan payments to 10 percent of their income. And I want to work with Congress to see how we can help even more Americans who feel trapped by student loan debt. Members of the college Republican and Democrat groups on campus shared their views on the State of the Union. We thought it was a good speech in general. Um, mostly overarching general ideas, so it wasn't necessarily extremely specific and it wasn't necessarily a whole lot of new stuff, uh, but the fact that the, the general theme, especially toward the end, was working together and, and uh, with, with regards to Congress especially and negating partisanship and things like that was um, really a good mention. And I think that if, if all of the listeners can sort of keep that in mind, particularly in government, we'll have a better year uh, legislatively speaking than we did last year. Uh, so I think progress is in the works as long as everybody was listening. It's of my opinion and many people in college Republicans that the way our government works is for the executive to work together with Congress to achieve these policies and when the president talks uh, several times in one of his most major policy speeches about uh, signing executive orders or using his own personal authority to get some of these initiatives accomplished, it worries me um, as it's of my opinion that he needs to be working together with Congress to get some of these initiatives passed. A new housing option for students is set to start construction this summer. The Centel Hotel Group is planning to reinvest their property tax savings into a new housing complex close to OSU's Fisher College of Business. According to Columbus Business First, the company plans to invest $1.8 million into this project. When we come back, we have our sit-down interview with Miss America. And we'll be joined by our Buckeye TV meteorologist, Mackenzie Barr. Don't go away. Bullying via social media can affect anyone, even Miss America. Alexandria Chapin has more from Nina Davaluri about how she turned a negative into a positive. Miss America stopped at Ohio State to talk cultural diversity in her journey at becoming the first woman to be crowned Miss America of Indian descent. When Nina Devulari won the Miss America crown, it was one of her happiest moments. This moment of happiness was followed by hurtful comments via social media, mainly Twitter, where some had hurtful words for the newly crowned Miss America. They called her a terrorist and said only an American should be entitled to win the crown. This type of bullying isn't uncommon on social media, but this time it was highly publicized. I asked Devilari how she handled the comments and what advice she would give to others who have similar experiences. I always say, whenever you have negative, try to create positive out of it. Try to take it as an opportunity to educate people, present yourself in the best light. Um, it's obviously difficult when you see things like that, especially written out on your Twitter feed. Um, but the silver lining for me, at least, with everything that happened was for every one negative comment, tweet, or post, I received hundreds, if not thousands, of words of positive encouragement and remarks and support from people all across the country. There were many positive comments that came Miss America's way. And she spoke at Ohio State about her platform, cultural diversity, and why it's important to everyone. I've always talked about it from 
the sense of cultural competency, um, because it's not simply about opening a discussion about race, because that hasn't necessarily proven to be effective, but really getting engaged in hands-on activities with various cultures. Um, and it's not only important from an educational standpoint, but from a business standpoint, life in general, you're going to have to work with people who um, are from different cultures, different ethnicities than you. Um, and learning how to communicate with them in an open and honest manner is really lifelong valuable skills. Devulari also talked about how important the Miss America organization is to young women and how it helped her with her education. Devulari is much more than a beauty queen you see on stage. She plans to attend medical school after she completes her year of service as Miss America. Especially with the Miss America organization, um, we're different from any other system because we're so scholarship and service based. Um, because of this organization, I won a total of $91,000 to further my education, um, which is no small chunk of change. Um, and in addition to that, I really learned how to interview, um, lifelong skills that I can take to any aspect of my career, um, as well as be involved in my community. And it's given me a microphone, really a megaphone, uh, to discuss a platform that's really important to me. For more on my interview with Miss America and how education and scholarship has influenced her life, watch episode two of Buckeye Entertainment. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alexandria Chapin. Liquor sales in Ohio reached a new record high in 2013. And topping the list of most popular liquor brands was Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Ohioans bought over 350,000 gallons. Two buildings on campus may soon undergo a $52.8 million renovation. The Ohio Higher Education Funding Commission proposed these funds be provided for the renovations of Pomerine and Oxley Halls as part of their 2015-2016 state funding recommendations. The new, newly renovated halls will house a new comprehensive data analytics program. More students will be able to fill up the South Stands next year thanks to some renovations. Ariana Bernard brings us the story. The volume and intensity levels in the South Stand are going to rise as future renovations move 2,500 seats from the north end zone to the south end zone here at the SHU. In addition to the seats added above the south end zone ramps, other renovations include permanent lighting installations to the top of the stadium walls. Director of Football Operations for Block O, Jake Bradley, spoke positively about the future SHU renovations. I'm very excited for the renovations here. I mean, whenever you have the chance to bring even more people into the stadium, it can only only lighten up the atmosphere, make it more fired up. Students are going to be really happy with it. The projected cost of the renovation is set at $8.9 million to be paid with the athletic department funds. This cost will have no effect on students planning to buy a ticket package, and some students are very excited about the renovations. I think it's a really good idea to get more students in the South Oval, especially like when you know people who sit on North stands. It's kind of like, oh, you sit on North when like all the students are in the South. So I think it's a really good idea to like, because especially there'll be like more energy with just everyone sitting together. I think it's a really good idea to have more room for students to sit together in the South. So there's a bigger block out on there that can get the students rowdied up. So there's bigger, louder cheers from the student section with more energy and more fun. The start date of the renovations is set for the week of February 3rd and expected completion is in August of 2014. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Ariana Bernard. Our meteorologist Mackenzie Bart joins us now with your full weekend weather forecast. Mackenzie, what can we expect this week? Thanks, Alex. We are finally going to see temperatures start to warm up to end out January. As you take a look at our day planner for Friday, temperatures starting off at 28. There will be some snow flurries in the morning. Those continuing throughout the day, 33 by 3. And then at nightfall, that chance of snow flurries will increase. Temperature of 30 degrees. Super Bowl Sunday is coming up on this Sunday. And as you see, it's going to be quite a chilly day, especially with that wind chill being quite below the temperatures. As you see, we have that planned out from the kickoff, halftime, and the end of the game, looking around 20 degrees. But as we take a look at our national radar, we can track the snow as it's coming into Ohio, mainly affecting the northern parts of Ohio, as you see here, landing by 3 o'clock on Friday. You can see that will be affecting the Cleveland area and around there. Um, looking at our surface map, this cold front is bringing in that snow precipitation, but right behind it we have a high pressure system which is going to clear up that air. Looking at tonight, temperatures a low of 26 degrees, chance of flurries. Most flurries will be heavier by nightfall around 10 o'clock. Winds from the south 3 to 5 miles an hour. As we jump on into 
Saturday, we're looking at a temperature of 42 degrees, rain and snow mix, winds from the southwest 10 to 13 miles an hour. Now let's take a look at your five-day forecast. Saturday, a low of 20. Super Bowl Sunday, a great day for football, high of 27, low of 15 with mostly sunny skies. Monday through Wednesday, as you see, we do have a chance of snow flurries being the highest percentage on Tuesday. Wednesday, temperatures being a high of 30, low of 12. That's your Buckeye News Now weather update. Back to you guys in the studio. And speaking of these cold temperatures, a strange weather phenomenon can be seen on campus. They're called snow rollers, snow logs, or Mother Nature snowballs, and they need very precise weather conditions in order to form. There needs to be a cold layer of snow under a loose layer of snow and some strong winds. When we come back, we'll take a look at some Ohio State basketball action with our sports director, Franz Ross. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're now joined by our sports director, Franz Ross. Thanks for joining us, Franz. Thanks, Alice. Alex, coming off their first win in a while against Illinois, the men's basketball team hosted the bottom of the Big Ten in the Penn State Nittany Lions on Wednesday. Here with the Post Game Report is our assistant sports director, Hayden Grove. Well, I, as a team, I don't think we care enough. We, these, these losses don't hurt enough, dude. This is, this is embarrassing. Like, every, every, every other team in our conference is laugh, laughing at us right now. They're on top of the world. <laughs> Lenzel Smith summed it up perfectly. The Buckeyes have hit rock bottom after falling to the Penn State Nittany Lions for the first time in Thad Mata's tenure by a final score of 71-70. to For a while, it seemed like things were finally back on track for the Buckeyes. After a decent first half in which Ohio State led by four points and shot 46.4% from the field, Ohio State built an 11-point lead with just 7.59 left in the game. From that point on, however, things completely broke down for the home team. The Nittany Lions tore apart the Buckeyes for the last eight minutes until they found themselves down just three points with 27 seconds left to go and the ball in their hands. Penn State guard DJ Newbel waved off his teammates and nailed the game-tying basket, shocking the Ohio State crowd and sending the game into overtime. But Newbel wasn't done with the Buckeyes just yet. Up a point in overtime, Ohio State needed just a single stop to secure their second straight win. Instead, Newble took the ball with 11 seconds left, shot it, and sunk it, this time giving Penn State their first victory against Ohio State in the Thad Mata era. It was, I think, 11 seconds left. Uh, we was down by one. Um, I just cleared out one on one side of the floor. I knew that they was going to try to stop me from going right because they've been shading me left all game. So I just made a quick right-to-left crossover and just pulled up with confidence. Unfortunately, they went down. I take, I take credit for it. Um, obviously, you know, he's a great player. He's gonna he's gonna take the shot and I let him get back middle and he made a big one he made a, a big shot I, I tried to put a hand up I thought it was there it wasn't you know he, he knocked it down. Following the game, an emotional Lenzel Smith Jr. took the time to describe the loss as the worst in his Ohio State career. This is a, this is a bad loss for this program and for me and Aaron. Um, definitely my senior year. This is not what I had in mind, um, but you know. I'll never give up on my team, and I know that when we get a cause and we get hungry for wins and, you know, we stick together and we become a team again, I, I'll take us against anybody in the country. But right now, we got, we got to find what we're missing. Whether or not the Buckeyes can climb out of the slump remains to be seen, but they'll take the first step this Saturday as they face the Wisconsin Badgers in Madison. For Buckeye TV, I'm Hayden Grove. The men's basketball team has had back-to-back -back home games, while the women's team recently fell to Michigan State. Here to wrap up this week in Ohio State sports is our sports reporter, Jordan L. Wood. The men's basketball team suffered a tough overtime loss on Wednesday to Penn State. The 71-70 game handed coach Thad Mata his first loss against the Nittany Lions. The Buckeyes held the lead at halftime and for most of the second half, but Penn State kept themselves in the game and hit a shot with two seconds left in the game to ultimately get the win. The Buckeyes have now lost five of their last six games. They are set to hit the road to take on Wisconsin. In women's basketball, the Buckeyes were able to travel to Ann Arbor and beat Michigan on their own court. Hoping to bring that momentum home, the ladies faced off against Michigan State at the shot, but weren't able to get the same results, losing 82-68. to Despite the loss, junior guard Raven Ferguson had a career-high 20 points off the bench. She led the Buckeyes in scoring in both games. 
In men's hockey, the Buckeyes split the weekend series with the number nine Wisconsin Badgers, losing the first game five to three. But the Buckeyes were able to make a comeback the next night, getting a three to one win to end a four game winless streak. Goals came from Nick Schilke and Nick Otto. After the Badgers pulled their goalie, another goal came from Derek Angeli. The Buckeyes have a weekend series at home, taking on Penn State. In women's hockey, their first game against Minnesota State went into overtime, but it only took sophomore Julia McKinnon 38 seconds to get the win for the Buckeyes with a 3-2 victory. The next night, they didn't need the extra minutes, taking down the Mavericks 4-2, thanks to two goals from freshman Claudia Kelper, who was named WCHA Rookie of the Week. The Buckeyes take on St. Cloud State this weekend. The number 15 Ohio State men's volleyball team managed a pair of road wins. They took down Quincy in an easy 1-2-3 matches and the 3-0 win. Junior Andrew Lutz tied a season-high 16 kills. The Buckeyes also defeated Lindenwood 3-1. In the game, Andrew Lutz and Michael Henschey combined 35 kills. The Buckeyes now improved to 4-3 overall and travel to Chicago to take on Loyola this weekend. Ohio State men's lacrosse is almost in full swing. The Buckeyes held an exhibition game last weekend against Navy, losing 15 to 11. They'll host one more exhibition game this weekend against Robert Morris before starting their official season against John Hopkins. The Ohio State synchronized swimming team opened their season with the Ohio State Invitational, taking first place with 94 points. Michigan at second, Miami University at third, and Ohio University at fourth. For all your winter and spring sports news, make sure to like Buckeye TV on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Jordan Elwood. Have you ever wanted to talk sports on TV? Well, now is your chance. Send Buckeye TV who you think will win in the Super Bowl and what the final score will be by tweeting at us or posting on our Facebook wall. The closest prediction will land you a spot on the National Hour to talk about Super Bowl 48. So send us your thoughts on the big game and you can end up on this set. That's all we have for you this week on Buckeye News Now. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. <laughs>